So I know what you're thinking. Why would I use a bow when I can use this big ass greatsword? Or better yet, this colossal greatsword? Or why would I do that when I can slice and dice and shoot beams with a katana? I get it. I, I totally do. But here's the thing. I'm not even trying to straight up get you to use a bow and only a bow. They don't scale very well in the first place. There's just so much versatility and CC available that not only makes traversing smoother, but it also makes doing so that much more fun. Stick with me for a few minutes and I swear I'll let you get back to staggering everything and firing off massively powerful spells. This part is going to be somewhat the obvious reason to rock a bow. You can take things out before they even know you exist and have zero maidens IRL. Having a bow that you can switch to is just a fantastic trick to have up your sleeve. A well-placed headshot can do wonders on enemies, even if you don't have jacked up dexterity. You put the best CC of them all on the enemy. Death. Even if you don't outright kill the enemy, engaging them with half a health bar gone or more is going to be a much smoother experience most of the time. The best part is you can actually give some enemies that like to hide away and snipe a taste of their own medicine. Whether you're out in the open or need to take out that enemy that's going to sound the alarm, you can be rest assured a well-placed arrow can do the trick. Now, this is probably my favorite part of using a bow, and one that doesn't get used nearly enough. There's quite a few situations in Elden Ring where things aren't exactly a fair matchup. We're talking 1 versus 2, 1 versus 3, or 1 versus everything. And in Elden Ring, taking even a single enemy out of an encounter can be game-changing. But what if there were an enemy or two that was sleeping on the job? Take out your sleepy time arrows and even out the fight. And this isn't one of those things where you can only have one enemy asleep at a time. If they can sleep, and you have the arrows, you can make them all go night-night. Crafting arrows use Trina's Lily, which can be pretty rare out in the world, so be sure to pick them up when you can see them. Now a few quick things to keep in mind. Some enemies are just outright immune to sleep. And, putting an enemy to sleep is not immediate in the sense that they won't fall asleep mid-attack. They will finish said attack, then fall asleep. Most importantly, on a pretty large number of enemies, especially the large ones, you can get off that cinematic crit, like those annoying ass crabs. And the sleep duration is honestly pretty lengthy, so if you want to just scoot past them without even killing them, then by all means do so. But let's be real, you're not going to do that. In that same sense of sneakery, we have distracting arrows that are very much self-explanatory in their name. You fire them off, and they make a noise in the area it hit. Now, I will say that this isn't a huge range, so keep that in mind when you determine how close you fire it by your target. In using a bow, there's one type of arrow that will clearly be available no matter what game you're playing. Poison. In Elden Ring, poison is a long play, ticking off 10 damage a second. Now, in saying that, it doesn't sound great, but check here in this boss battle. I pop off a couple arrows and eventually ticks about 90 times for 900 damage, and that's not including the damage of the shots. That's not a bad return on investment at all. The best spot to pick up poison arrows quick is buying them from the isolated merchant here. Bleed arrows do exactly what their melee counterparts do. If you fire off enough of these suckers, you're going to get rewarded with a big old blood explosion and a solid chunk of the enemy's health bar going away. These are particularly nice for those boss fights to get a bit of cheeky damage in before the gap is fully closed. If you didn't watch my previous video on bleed and how powerful it is, a quick explanation is you build up the bleed meter so far, you hit a threshold, and then a percentage of damage is done according to the enemy's health bar. Best way to make these arrows is by gathering blood roses from Fort Hot. Mighty Shot has to be my favorite Ash of War for the bow as we speak. It takes one of the weaknesses of the bow and helps alleviate it. You get a shot that does more damage and has more force to it. Have an enemy with a shield? This shot still goes through and does damage. It also seems to have an impact on the efficacy of sleep, poison, and bleed arrows. When you land this shot straight onto an enemy's body, it's very easy to stagger them. And, if you have enemies that dodge around a lot, you're more likely to hit with this shot than a normal one. To wrap things up, I want to give you a few tips that didn't so much need their own spotlight. Just like melee weapons, the new jump mechanic is fantastic for bows. Jumping and firing is a great way to not only bait an enemy into a swing, but then to get the shot off immediately. Now, if you're using a short bow, you can pop off another shot quickly when you land. To 
piggyback off of that, I would highly recommend that you use those beast bones for the different specialty arrows and not for making normal arrows. The ones you craft have much lower damage and you can buy normal ones at about 20 runes a pop so you can easily afford that using residual runes after you level up. With all that being said, take a chance on the bow. Add it to your repertoire. You very well could use it as a primary but even then you can use it as a supplement to your primary weapon and have access to so much CC and utility. But on that note, have a good night, happy exploration, and I will see you guys in the next video.